Here we are. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. Today, we are the 9th of May, 2022. Uh, free. <laughs> Sorry. I don't want time to pass. Uh, around the virtual table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark White isn't there, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Varharten, Kevin Martins, and our visitor, I'm up. Sa Sartak, is that correctly said? Yes. Okay. Um, let's get started with announcement. The weekly core release 2.404 is out, at least release, packages, and Docker image. Um, so I assume, as usual, we have the uh, release checklist item to be finished. Change log, change log, doc, etc. As usual, that will be done a bit later, but that's a go for us to deploy that new version. Hopefully, that will fix an issue we are seeing with Infra CI, where Jenkins is having issues with Unicode characters in GitHub pull requests, only with the 2403, so with last week weekly. The new one should fix the issue. Do you have something else about the new weekly? Okay. Do you have other announcements? Nope. Okay. Uh, let's have a look at the upcoming calendar. Uh, first of all, the next weekly, 2.4. 405 should happen next Tuesday, like every Tuesday. So that will be 16 of May, if I'm not mistaken, 2023. I don't remember when is the next LTS. Um, we had one last week, so I assume it will be in a few weeks. So I will put it in A unless someone can find it. Uh, that should be at least three weeks before any release for us. Let's check if we have announced Jenkins Security Advisory. The last one was the 12th of April. So no Security Advisory announced. And next major event currently, Mark Waite and Alex Brandes are attending the CDCon in Vancouver. I think the last day is Tuesday is today, and they will be headed back. I don't know what are the upcoming events where we will have a Jenkins team member. So we'll have an NA unless you know. Nope. So then, anything else to add to the calendar? The the next LTS will be the twenty two of June. Thanks. 2.346.1. Thanks. So we have plenty of time in front of us for this one. Perfect. So let's start with the work that we were able to finish last week. Um, we had a contributor, a new maintainer of a new plugin, Jacked plugin. Uh, who look like to have some issues and we were able to help them to release the first version of their plugin. Now it's more discussion about versioning. So we can consider this issue closed. Uh, unable to create accounts. We have a user who try to create their accounts. I'm not really sure. Um, I think for this one, they had the issue the logs of the application mention cookie. So in that case, when you have the cookie error as per the source code, uh, it means that the user already had a, a, a session to account Jenkins IO on their web browser. That one doesn't happen often. Usually it's when you have multiple accounts and you have not unlogged your, your previous account when you try to create a new one. It's considered spam because that means you already are trying to create multiple accounts on an automated way on the same web browser session or the same curl session. That might be another issue, of course, but usually that's what the cookie means because the web server detects cookie with an active session. 
if you see that issue and you are human and not trying, try to clean up your cookies as usual. Or unlock from the other session properly, better. Um, then uh, we had the uh, Debian packages starting with no longer published. So that one is closed as not planned. Um, oh, I will continue with the list on the left if it's okay for you. So renew update center certificates. So we were able after the to renew the certificate used to sign the metadata of the update center and the tools with success. Uh, so now we are four person having access to the CA, the certificate authority in charge of signing this certificate. That means anyone from the team is able to generate a new certificate once a year usually, but only four person in the world have the ability to sign this request for generating a new certificate. It's now Kosuke, the creator of Jenkins, Oleg Nenashev, Olivier Verna, and now myself as infrastructure officer. Uh, that CA is valid for five years. That means the four of us for the five upcoming years have to take care of that credential. Uh, so that one is okay. We were able to generate and unblock the, the, web, the all the jobs and everything is back. No issue and nothing was broken, of course, for the end users. We had the delay of, of six or seven hours uh, last Tuesday before there is a inter, uh, internal safety system in the update center generation that stopped building the update center and updating it uh, 30 days before expiration of the certificate, which we met the 2 of May. We can change using an environment variable that has been logged on the issue for next year. Um, oh, I still need to update the calendar notification though for next year. Uh, update, then uh, update CI, uh, so update controller to the latest LTS. Last Wednesday, we had an LTS release. So we updated all our controller based on the LTS version with the plugins. Uh, side note, that one embedded an Azure Virtual Machine plugin update, which had a breaking change. So we were beaten by this one, but, but we were able to fix that on all the controller in less than one hour. So we had a, a, a tiny queue of 15 builds on CI Jenkins IO due to that. As soon as it was fixed, then the queue was uh, treated immediately. Update center is missing weekly release. Um, that one was closed. It should have been uh, closed as not planned. Uh, no action expected from us. It looks like that when we have a new weekly OLTS release, we need to have the update center to re regenerate the new version. And in order for that, you need a new plugin. So there is that time window between a new core release, either LTS or weekly, until there is a release of another plugin. There is no need to regenerate just for the core release. So that's why uh, that's what Mark explained and the reason why there were no action for us. The case here, just to be sure for everyone, that everyone follows me because I might have been too quick. Um, since we weren't able to successfully build the update center, no new plugin were updated. So the new core release wasn't taken in account. As soon as the update center was updated with the new certificates, then everything went back to normal. Any question so far? Okay. Then we had don't send page or duty notification on Datadog warning notices. So thanks, survey for uh, taking care of this one. That's way less alert for us, especially when we have. Um, uh, machine using, let's say, 80, 81% or 85% of the hard drive, it's only a warning. It's not blocking, it's not emergency. It only decreases, it, it's a penalty for the IO performances. And thanks, Harvey, for adding that nice uh, bot that every day tells us and reminds us to check the Datadog monitors for warning since we don't receive alerts anymore. 
Um, that's all for the, the task that we act on. On non-plan, we had the Debian package starting with a two Nininia. So we had a user that was using uh, accidentally an accidentally working URL for the Debian packages. They should not, and they, they have been told to use the official URL somewhere else. So they should not have any issue in the future. We had user for a uh, user that I looks like thanks for taking care of that folks. Um, forgot username and password. Someone messed up, mixed our L desk with their company L desk. So they wanted to get access to their own Jenkins, but yeah, nothing we can do for these people. And again, missing update center for two dot whatever. That's what I explained earlier. That one is focused only on the update center generation and the other is a consequence of the certificate. Any question whatsoever? Okay, so let's move to the work in progress. Um, first of all, I'm taking in the order on the left. Uh, increase disk space for system pool. So we have a private Kubernetes cluster uh, hosting private Jenkins controller. And the system pool is a node pool, a collection of virtual machine where the technical uh, services, the, let's say the, you can see that as plugins, the plugins of the cluster in charge of taking care of the data, for instance, um, it's, it's running on these virtual machines. These machines have an uh, initially 30 gigabyte of system disk. Uh, we receive alerts that we have uh, warnings and alerts that these disks are uh, quite often used and we are almost full. Um, the goal is to increase the disk space to let this machine have the expected performances. So we tried just before that meeting with uh, Stefan and we had an issue with this one is changing the default system node pool of an AKS cluster requires destroying and creating a brand new cluster. That's an, that looks like to be an Azure constraint. That means we cannot increase that disk. We want to try because the documentation is not really, uh, let's say rich, there we are missing information. We might be able to use either a special Terraform attributes for letting the uh, Azure API, they can create and recycle between two system node pools, or we can try creating a system node pools on our own to see if it work. Still not sure um, how we could do that, but uh, might need to recreate, um, sorry, changing this resource require destroy recreate of the cluster. Um, so another solution here is that we don't need that much of data. Most of this data is consumed by the Docker images of the services running here. So I propose that we, instead of focusing on this, we try moving, we have another issue. We discover that some of our bots are running on these node pools and they should not. They should run on the Linux pool. So if we don't have this node pool anymore, we we expect the disk usage to uh, to be decreased. So proposal is that we first move the workloads that should not run on that system pool. Eventually we might need to add a specific system pool for that. And once we don't have any of these images, Nginx ingress, um, the free bots and maybe a, four, a fifth, we only let the Azure default DNS and CSI uh, pods, then we shouldn't have any warning anymore. Does it make, make sense? Do you agree on that or do you have other ideas? Okay, so let me, let's start moving up workload to decrease Disk usage. Uh, by the way, we took the opportunity to upgrade the Linux pool disk size that was set to 50 gigabyte, and we were using we were using yeah 80 81, so we are just on the limit of the warning. And nice reminder from Stefan is that 
in Azure, the way you pay for the hard drive or the SSDs, um, you pay for the, the next limits. So we were using 50 gigabytes. That means we can increase until the limit of 64. We will pay the same. You don't pay depending on the size you pay by, um, I forgot the English words, uh, but um, it's a 32 and, and 64. So whether you have a 33 gigabyte disk or a 64, you pay the same. So that's why we increase it to 64. That should also remove the last warning for these missions. So upgraded Linux pool. Looks, looks good for you folks, any issue? Okay, uh, we had a user asking for their building a plugin on CI Jenkins IO. They have an, an issue. So what they are doing uh, is that they need a jar dependency for Maven on their plugin. And that jar dependency is part of the GitHub source code. Their PomXML had a Maven repository name which has a specific IDs that points to the local files. So if you build locally on a machine that work, and what I discover is that our setup with the mirroring is trying to retrieve the artifact from ACP, from our artifact caching proxy. I, th I would have expected Maven to detect the file dash, uh, column dash dash and, and implies that it's local, so it shouldn't, but doesn't seem to work that way. So I've opened two pull requests uh, to be reviewed by you folks that adds uh, two IDs to the list of exception. The one they use on their one and local. Both names uh, uh, means, hey, if you, you can define a custom one to be excluded. So anyone else should be able to do the same trick. So once merge, we should be able to try this one and validate the issue. So uh, yeah, I need a review and that's all. And then I will take care of text, testing, text testing that and go back to the end users. Any question? Migrate trusted CI Jenkins IO from AWS to Azure. Stefan, can you give us a status report of that task? That's your big yes. task. Since the, the end of last week, uh, we now have the three uh, VMs set up in Azure in the same network uh, with uh, all this there. Uh, subnet. Uh, we have the, the Boons VM, the controller VM, and the permanent agent VM. Now I need to uh, still work on the network uh, security configuration, and, and then I will have to start on the, on the specific migration of data. Next, uh, work on security Sorry. groups and then start migrating data. Okay, cool. Start preparing the migration first, but yes. Migration data. Um, may I ask you, you can start also the puppet port. Uh, okay. I've, uh, I don't remember if I've written that, but I validated uh, locally with the Vagrant virtual machine that Ubuntu 22 with the Jenkins controller uh, a profile on Puppet works perfectly. I mean, it's it's a Docker container, so they should be- I, I may need your help because I've never uh, added a new VM in Puppet. So I know that we need to register it in the Puppet master, but I may need some- Okay. Uh, both Harvey and I know how to do that. Cool. Uh, I don't know error. So just information, I don't know if uh, he or if you, I, let's, let's see, but we sh both of us should be able. Uh, no. no problem. Uh, it's written that you need help to bootstrap this part. Makes sense. Puppet works perfectly on Ubuntu 20.04 for the Jenkins controller. Go, go, go to add this VM once security groups are OK. And before migration, of course. Any question on that one? Nope. Okay. Um, can't access Apply Tools account. Another user uh, 
for another uh, uh, plugin release. Uh, most of the time we have issue. While we have you, Kevin and Bruno, uh, I might have a request that, that I'm, I'm making the request without thinking, but we might need help and we might need to catch these two contributors of two different plugins um, to check if we if there isn't something on the documentation to be fixed and improved. Fixed because we discovered that Artifactory has changed its UI. So part of our documentation explaining how to get your uh, a maintainer Jenkins encrypted password to put on Maven when mm. you do a Maven manual release, that one does not seem to work anymore through the UI. Okay. So we might need to check Good with again. Gfrog, yeah. but mm -hmm. or at least remove the part of the documentation that guides users step by step with the screenshots, because uh, it's a brand new version of Artifactory. Uh, the curl common line still work perfectly. Uh, yeah, so that one is fixed, and the rest, this user seems to have it a lot of uh, hiccups. One started from scratch, so that one might be the best target, but that user did not read carefully step by step, so a lot of mistakes were human. But that might be a way to improve the current documentation for brand new contributor. Cool. I'm not um... sure. Yeah. Do you know if the UI at uh, Artifactory JFrog is stable enough for us to start the documentation, or should we wait? I have no idea. I guess okay. it, 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 um, right now it it's, might seem it's exceptional in the sense that uh, they they are advertising since December about a brand new web UI that you can switch mm. to, and it looks like that the ports uh, where you you go to generate the Maven settings file. That one, despite uh, sticking to the classic UI, is still now using the new UI. And I think that's the breaking change that we recently, okay. an expected breaking change. Um, but I might be wrong. So there is that fix about the UI, because that one we need to fix the documentation, even if we say, hey, it's command line only. I, I don't, honestly, I don't mind. Um, and the other one is uh, maybe we have room for improvements, but we need the time to check on this one. I just wanted to share with both of you. Cool, thank you. If you have any question, don't state, even if it's now or later on these topics. Both users were able to release their plugins. Um, I haven't closed this one because I wasn't I haven't checked the last feedback from the user though. Uh, they should, so that might be closed today or tomorrow. No expectation. Okay, got to check one last time. Any question? Okay, the next one, make environment and description fields mandatory for bug type issues. So as uh, requested by Alex, uh, he wants to add two mandatory fields when someone open a bug on the Jenkins issue tracker on Jira. Uh, that has been, it looks like there has been no objection on the mailing list. So I tried Daniel to- Daniel Wazen. Yeah, sorry. Question, Daniel uh, uh, made an objection about uh, environment, I think. So there was an, an objection uh, for one of these two fields. Oh, sorry, I might have missed. Okay, I will loop with Daniel. But in any case, I need help from Daniel or Mark because I try to understand Jira and I failed. <laughs> and I'm not really willing to learn Jira, honestly. it's My brain is not wired for that. So I've asked Mark for help on that uh, topic. Um, ask Mark for help. So when Mark will be back from Vancouver, um thanks survey it looks it's like environment which is problematic as uh, it would need uh, an exhaustive list for environment and this list is not static oh, okay okay fair technical mm. reasons it has been explained in the Mailing list thread. Okay. 
I think I will try to to move that away and let the the board or the core developers with admin rights because not really related to infrastructure. And honestly, I don't know how to do that. So I need help from someone to teach me. Um, fail to deploy artifacts. Uh, that one should be closed as well. I need to check one last time if it's okay for you. Uh, I think closed it and you is this person continue to ask you questions about versioning and you continue to answer them. But I don't think it's uh, I don't I'm not sure if it's this one or another. No, it's another. Okay, uh, no, that's still siren carbonates. Uh, so I should be able to close it because it's a duplicate of. Um, Oh no, it's yeah manual. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, that person is still having a misconfigured uh, Maven settings. Good, good points. Um, okay, so that one uh, is open and need work from us or pointers. We have a password reset that should be okay. Uh, no answer from the user. I will wait 24 hours before closing without answer. Uh, I'm not sure what's the problem of that person, honestly, because they even gave the link where to reset. So I haven't seen any mail sent for uh, after a password reset in the mail logs. Okay, thanks for checking. Um, can you add a comment on the issue to tell that no email uh, was there? The account exists with this email. Uh, I haven't checked that. I have just oh, checked sorry. the Megan uh, logs. Yeah, I, I, I checked. I checked the account existence. So both of our uh, diagnostics points to that the person never, either the person never sent the form for a password reset or the, the person is not who, this, who they pretend to be. So in either case, without any answer, we'll close the tomorrow. So no, no expectation on this one. Uh, past releases sites are taking long time to load. So that one, I will move that one back to the backlog uh, because it's working and we were able to give a solution for the end user for the problem specifically. Initially, it was answering 503 errors and was slow, both. The errors are gone since now three weeks. And one of the two links is working really fast and the other links is slow. Uh, we, need to prove, uh, we need to prove that uh, where are the performance hiccups to see how we can act. So that's, uh, uh, we need for that to use Datadog. So that's something inside the end of survey, if I'm not mistaken, is that correct? Okay, what? Just a minute. So, um, yeah, uh, Ray, uh, you, uh, is that you in charge of uh, connecting Apache for the mirror get Jenkins IO with Datadog to collect metrics, specific Apache metrics? Uh, no, I haven't uh, done anything about that. <clears throat> okay, uh, are you willing to do it or should we take the issue? Uh, I don't mind. Yes, will you have time for the upcoming milestone? Maybe, we'll see. Um, if it's a maybe, then it's a no and we move that to backlog and we'll see later then. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, okay, so if you don't know, it's a back to backlog. As they are no emergency or blockers now. Uh, because we cannot take 20 or 25 issues uh, without being sure if we can yeah, have them. Sure. 
Uh -oh. that, that that's the idea. So I prefer if you don't know, it's a no, and then we don't take it and we do what we can. Uh, next one, unless there is a question on the performance issues. Uh, oh, I, I haven't shared uh, the solution. That person was trying to programmatically list the weekly releases from, and they use the link from the download page on Jenkins IO website. Uh, the idea here is I pointed them uh, to the Maven metadata XML file from Artifactory, which is the source of truth. That's the first thing when we have a new war release there. So they, they should only have to curl that XML file, parse it in XML and extract the list. Uh, we already have shell code doing that for the official Docker images. That's what I pointed to that person. Looks like they are using Golang, but I mean, that's a file to get on parse and treat. So they have a, a way to have the correct source of truth with uh, acceptable performances. That's why it's not a blocker anymore. Good for you. Um, <clears throat> then analytics v4, I haven't heard back from Olivier about the, we need to migrate some Google Analytics, its name properties. Uh, Olivier gave me and other person administrator on permission on that property, uh, but we need wall administrator. But it does not seem that Olivier has the wall admin. So um, yeah, we'll see. But at the same time, uh, Gavin uh, proposed again to go to use Matamo, which will be a self-hosted analytics platform instead of Google Analytics. Uh, so that could be interesting because he tried that successfully in parallel for uh, the past months. So I asked him if he can open an issue for Matomo, uh, listing the technical requirement to see uh, how and on which cluster we should host it. Does it need a database? Is it self-hosted, etc.? Uh, how much data do we need? So that will mean a new service on the public uh, Kates cluster. Uh, no, if we can import existing data. No idea. You can ask him. I mean, we still need. Uh, it will be still nice to have the access to analytics, even if we don't use it after that. Yeah. But. Yeah, worst case, we install Matomo and we start from scratch on a new set of data. I mean, we can always request the data until we start using Mat Ma Matomo and then. So yeah, so that one will go back to the backlog until we have answer from either Gavin or Olivier or both. Because there is no action expected from us. It should go back on the milestone if we have to act somewhere. Worst case, Google Analytics will continue working. It will automatically migrate in V4 in June, I think, or July. Even though the scary message here, the details on the administration tells me it will be automatically migrated, but with new, eventually new settings. That's why they recommend you to do it manually and check. I have no idea how that piece of crap work, honestly. So that's why I'm... Uh, if we could get away from a Google piece of crap service, I will be really happy to be quite honest. Uh, yeah, we might lose a few features, but I mean, collecting data for analytics is not something we should do. Uh, so the advantage of Matamo, it's clearly way more powerful in terms of respecting private life of our users. But we have to we have to host it and to store the data. That's the the, the double double edged sword here. So that one back to backlog until we hear from news. Until Olivier and Kevin answers back. Any question? To be quite honest, unless I have no idea, uh, are, are, are someone here? using the data from Google Analytics for Jenkins platform? The, those data or, or just- The data Google from the Google Analytics for the Jenkins platform. Oh. Never did. So it might be useful, but I have no idea. 
what data is tracked. I assume it's something on the Jenkins IO website to track user and their their path, but no idea. I'm not sure what would be the goal, honestly. Worth asking the question, unless that's a, maybe it's a naive question. I don't have knowledge of these tools, so. How would you use these tools, folks? That's not for us. That's for um, marketing purposes, or, or yeah, that's that's not for infrastructure or for um, the idea is to point out where in the in the world we are we have trending, where there is a, a I don't know interest. And there's lot and lot and lot of data in, in Google Analytics. So someone who knows how it works can extract some sense on it. But as you said, uh, we are not the one that we that will use it likewise. Yeah, but it's like CI Jenkins IO. We don't use CI Jenkins IO directly. We are not plugin maintainers but we need to know the use case of the person using the infrastructure we maintain. That's why I'm asking the question. Hervé, uh, uh, do, do you have previous experience with Google Analytics? Uh, it's in uh, the same context, so. Okay. So, uh, yeah. I, I, um, I will ask Givin on the IRC channel. He might have answers for that, and I, I assume Mark. Okay, next issue currently open, use a new virtual machine instance type for CI Jenkins IO, uh, work in progress. Uh, sorry, I've left a lock on Terraform Azure. I need to start working on it again. Was able to find a downsized instance with a bit, bit less memory. It's, to, it's a few, the, the, the economy, the, the price difference is low, it's like four, 40 bucks per month for the VM itself, but that will be a virtual machine uh, of last generation. Um, size found, um, yeah, I have, I have almost everything ready for creating an empty shell, the same idea of uh, what Stefan did with Trusted. So we should be able to do that soon. A VM ready to be created, need pair and review. Uh, so almost there. I don't know if you have a specific question for this one. No, okay. Next topic, migrate application from system pool to Linux pool on private gates. So the scope is the free bots that we are hosting. Um, I assume we weren't able to work on this today and it was a long weekend in France. So I assume we have to work on this one. Is it still okay for you, Hervé, to take it this week? Yes. Okay. On this one, delayed by core releases and long weekend. That one should solve the issue of system pool uh, using too much data as a reminder. So that one is important and we, we should max it out. Uh, can create account as usual. I will pass on this one that need to be checked. Uh, add load chamber to agents. Hervé, could you give us a, a quick status since it's your big central task? Um, I've got uh, it on, uh, this module installed on a nano server image, but I've got Two errors, not blocking, but two errors nonetheless. When I run this module from uh, Python directly, it doesn't work when I call launchable alone. I tried to put uh, the DLL corresponding to the two function I see in the error in the system uh, 32 of Windows, but um, then I have another error related to core CLR, which is poor shell, poor, uh, shell core. 
Okay. Okay, so yeah. Do, do you think that we need to, to say, okay, accept that we will have to use Windows Server Core instead, Nano Server? I don't know. Maybe it's acceptable to get two errors listed in the log. If your chamber is working as intended, uh, okay. maybe the... we don't care about these two errors. I don't have any information about it. Okay. Uh, can you check with Basil if it's uh, working for him in the current state? I propose that we release your latest changes with the DLLs to at least fix some of the errors. And when it's... No. No. When we add the, when I'm adding the DLL, yes, it's, this error is blocking. It doesn't. Ah, go okay. Oh, sorry, I misunderstood. Okay. The... Okay, so we sh so the question is with the currently deployed image version, we should have launchable with the initial error, but that should not be blocking because it still looks like it's working, right? It seems so. Okay. Uh, can you check with Basil the, the next steps for testing? Yes. And if it doesn't work, then the fallback will be using Windows Server Core and that's all. Uh, the impact means a longer startup time for the agent on ACI. But that's something we are bound to have in the future because we need to move these images to Packer, which require building on Windows Server Core. We cannot use Nano Server for our all-in-one agents. So at the moment on time, we, we will have to migrate to Windows Server Core. On the perfect world, we should do that once ACI workload will be moved to Kubernetes workloads. Because that means once we have the image on a single node, the image will be cached. So, which is not the case with ACI, which don't load the image on each call. So that should, that should make it pretty invisible. But if we have to, we'll have to start with Windows Server Core here at first. Okay. Is that okay for you? Or do you want to hand over the task if it's maybe uh, because it has been a lot for you on that part? Uh, no, it's okay. Okay. Uh, let's. Ah, Zoom is capturing my keyboard. Let's check with Basil with the current state if it works. Otherwise, we'll have to use Windows server core as base image um just one quick question part of this means uh, fixing the docker inbound agent repository uh do you think you will have time to work yes. on this today or tomorrow oh, yes. it's it's not blocker it's just a question about your timing yeah it's okay thanks um artifact caching proxies and reliable uh, we so uh, we had the DNS issues see below. Haven't seen more issues on digital ascent, which is a good news. And the Azure port should be solved by the CI Jenkins IO migration. However, based on the latest changes that Tim Yacom did on the Azure VM plugin, we should be able to already migrate the CI Jenkins IO agents at least the virtual machines to the same network as the ACP. So that's why I'm keeping that issue open. That should be separate tasks because CI Jenkins IO virtual machine migration might be done quickly, or maybe it, it will take weeks. I'm still not sure. So if you don't see any objection, I will work on migrating the ephemeral agent or anyone interested can take, but as part of the artifact caching proxy reliability. with the new inbound Azure VM. So that's why I'm keeping that on the incoming one. I will add a comment. Feature should be able to migrate CI Jenkins IO ephemeral agents to the ACP network. Uh, no question? Yep. The next one, add a cluster public gates. Um, Ray, is it okay for you to start working on this one? I don't remember. I, 
I might have said I wanted to start on it and I did not have any time during the past week. Yeah, we have to plan uh, the migration. We have to make the migration plan and start playing it. Okay. We can do one service per week or that kind of, uh, it's a rule of thumb. Uh, that should not be a problem for most of the services. To plan migrations, pick a service and move it and iterate. Okay, is it okay if I add you uh, and if you need help uh, for a review, don't stay to ask. Looks good for you? Okay. <clears throat> Clean up and import and manage Datadog monitoring in Terraform. Uh, can you remind me the status of this one? Uh, I haven't worked on this. Uh, there are uh, several uh, unmanaged or duplicated uh, Datadog monitoring. Mm -hmm. And I've created this issue to import them as Terraform with Terraform. Okay, uh, do you think you can work on it on the upcoming milestone or should we put this, this one back on the backlog? We can work on it. Yes, okay. Um, so we keep it for the next milestone, temporary name resolution failure on plugin bomb builds. So we need more investigation on the core DNS embedded in the EKS clusters. So we already removed Datadog age and custom, um, custom probes that were making requests outside. On CI gates, need to do the same for EKS public. Otherwise it generate a bunch of uh, false positive errors. Still, we still need to understand why core DNS component is not able to resolve all the DNS requests outside. Is it because not powerful enough? Was it a transient error on the AWS network? We don't know. We need to go deeper. There, is, there isn't anything obvious for now. We talked about security groups blocking the uh, outbound DNS request. It does not look like it's the case. So we will have to to try a bit more with debug container on the node pools and see what happened. Um, I think that's all for the current milestone. Stefan, I took you had IRM64 yeah, work. Probably, but... I probably forgot to put it on the milestone. Okay. So I won't put it on this milestone since it's not finished, but can you report just where yeah, you are? I... We'll add it on new items. Uh, I managed to uh, to try the new uh, Azure IRM64 VM that are built by uh, Packer, Packer, and um, and now they are in used on infra.ci, the Jenkins.io. Um, it's working great. So we will be able to remove the Amazon AWS last remnant in uh, in uh, infra.ci with those last uh, IRM64 VM. So it's for infra.ci and Packer. Next step for infra.ci, remove AWS. IRM64. Okay. Um, is that okay for you to then continue on CI Jenkins IO and, and add the new template and remove the former AWS? Yes, with pleasure. Do the same as your for IRM64. And once it's done, let's smile, clean up Packer image to remove any AWS code. We don't want to build AWS virtual machine image anymore. Yeah, we have we the, the CLI to update too. Looks good for you yes. to add this on the upcoming milestone. Thank you. Um, on the upcoming task, uh, I'm going to work on this because I already started Ubuntu 22.0 for campaign. 
I have removed this one because I knew I was off, so no time to work on this one. So the next step here will be the, the node pool on AKS. Since we are playing around with the system pools and everything, um, I'm yeah, the goal is to see uh, and start creating new system pool and new node pools and migrate everything in green blue to use Ubuntu 2204 instead of 18 on this one. I won't go further on that topic because uh, yeah, we already have a lot of things. Um, do you have other topics that you see that you will want to work on on the upcoming milestone or that looks like important for you on the backlog? Okay, let's have a look at the incoming issues. So we have a new issue, register with the wrong email. Okay, accounts, password reset. I don't see other new triage issue. Anything else you want to work on? Okay, do you have other topics you want to bring? Nope, okay. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay, so if it's uh, okay for all of you, we'll see each other next week or later today or tomorrow for the people who uh, work with me. Have a nice day, have a nice week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye.